Tomorrow we'd best have our Ovaltine and get to bed, Sergeant. Oh, dear. Seems as though Pelson has forgotten the sugar. Not on my account. Oh, you don't take sugar? I don't take Ovaltine. Well, if it's good enough for Orphan Annie, Sergeant, here is a list of all the people you'll be picking up in the morning. At 9.30 in front of the Brill Building, a Mr. Eddie McEwen. Mr. McEwen is a struggling young comedian, and the, bil the Brill Building is over by which? Yes, I uh, know where it is. Of course you do. Then, at an apartment on... East 50th, 2.30, you will pick up a Miss Baverstock. Oh, and Mr. McEwen is, I am given to understand, an incredibly struggling young comedian. Perhaps to spare Miss Baverstock, he'd best ride up front with you. Swell. Then at a house on East 92nd Street, you are to pick up a Mr. Patrick O'Reilly. Mr. O'Reilly is an Irish tenor. You told this Miss Baverstock you had a new chauffeur? I made up some story, yes. The others will arrive by car and train. I do hope they make their connections. Snow's supposed to stop by midnight. Goodness, I hope they settle whatever it is they're talking about. And still falling all along the eastern seaboard, what had originally been estimated as two inches has already doubled now, with no end in sight. Hope this won't scare off our people. Sorry, what? Said, I hope this won't scare off our people. My dear, these are actors, producer, director, lyricist, composer, all coming to get my money for their big Broadway show. Nothing short of the end of the world will stop them. Okay, this is gonna work. You've got to say the speech exactly like we rehearsed. You're going to be able to talk into this, okay? Sergeant, espionage is in my blood. I will not fail you. Ah, poor dead BB stay home makeup kit. You know, being all grand was always so important to her, and now she is anything but. Here. Ah, that which may reveal a murder. Oh, Sergeant, this is going to be a grand adventure. And I prepared a perfectly grand menu for the occasion. To begin with, a terrine of December root, followed by maybe some lobster on dill. Do you think paprika might go well? Uh, well, since my first adventure will be driving through a snowstorm tomorrow, I best begin to sleep. Come, I'll show you your room. Oh, and I must admit, you are something of a surprise to me, Sergeant. I had thought all New York policemen to be Irish. 
We are. The Federal Bureau of Investigations would confirm these rumors. The Nazi submarine is believed to have landed these men on the shore of Long Island earlier this month with the discovery of the body of Franz Becker knifed to death in the back of a restaurant in the Yorkville section of Manhattan. It is now believed that only one, possibly the leader of the saboteurs, is still at large. In other news, the British 8th Army announced success today in North Africa near City Barani. So there's a taxi stuck down the drive. I'm going down there with a shovel. Oh, and the bar needs condiments. Will you see to it? John, Gnede de Frau. Gnede de Frau? A bit formal today, aren't we, Helsa? Oh, I think I know. Little Helsa's curious about my overnight guest, isn't she? Nine. Not even a little bit curious about which bedroom he slept in? Never mind, you're still the princess around here. Now, two of the day. There will be seven for lunch and four for dinner. And I want you at your most efficient today, Helsa. I'm not at liberty to tell you why, but today we'll add a bone-chilling chapter to the von Grossi Gruten Annals. Also, clear that. Joe. Ah! Thank you, thank you. Sure, we're being fed down at the bottom of the hill, wouldn't you know? Joe, I hear the car. No, that's another car. We can even get up the driveway. I'm Patrick O'Reilly. I'm one of the actors, and I thought I'd be coming up to see if I could borrow a shibble. Shibble? Oh, Fraulein von Goskerutin is using it right now. May I take your coat? Yeah. I may as well go back down and see what I can do. You are Irish, Mr. O'Reilly? As Patty's cow. And you are? I am German. Are you now? A refugee. Fraulein von Grosskruten gave me refuge here four years ago. Did she now? From the Nazis. <laughs> the Nazis, was it? <laughs> Swine that they are! <laughs> I see. What's well, been most interesting meeting you, miss? Wenzel. Hans Wenzel. <laughs> ah. Well, I'll be getting back down. Huh. Wasn't there a very famous cabaret entertainer named Wenzel? At the Tivoli, I believe. Oh, you are familiar with the German cabaret entertainers. Well, it's after being my business now, isn't it? I was Peter never... Wenzel. Isn't that his name? Mm, I was never familiar with the cabarets. This is the library. We'll hold the audition in here, Ken. Ah, director at work. Well, you can move anything wherever you like it. It's perfect. Okay. Hello there, I'm Elsa von Grossenknutten. I'm hostess. Patrick O'Reilly. Our group stuck down below, and I was seeing if I could borrow a shovel. Sorry, a shovel? A shovel. Oh, yes, a shovel. Well, that's right outside. But have you met Miss Nikki, uh... Crandall? Uh, yes. Oh, and this is Kendall LeMay, your director. Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. Now I'll see about getting that shovel. I'll come with you. Ah, it's been at the bottom of the hill, miss, and the snow is as steep as the cliffs of Killarney. Well, Mr. O'Reilly, I am of solid Bavarian stock. The snow is in my blood. But not in your heart, dear Elsa. This woman is the most generous patron of our art life today. Am I, Ken? Without her, there wouldn't be more than 30 or 40 shows in the Great White Way. She backed 12 last season. Well, I do like to dabble. Now, Ken, suppose you mix you and Miss Crandall a drink. Elsa will bring your luggage up to your room. Northwest guest room, Hilsa. Roger and Bernice are upstairs thawing out, and Marjorie's just trudging up the hill. Soon we'll all be together again, won't we, Ken? Yes. It will be nice to see Roger and Bernice again. All together, right, Ken? Yes.
Oh, and when I get back, I want to hear all about Hollywood. You know, what is it like? Just dump the orange robe in the garment district. That's Hollywood. Oh, picturesque. Of course there is an ocean somewhere. You never saw the ocean? Of course I saw the ocean. I was at a party in Santa Monica and someone opened the drapes. Drink? No, thank you. You're about to tell me in the cab where you left off in Washington? Dewberry. You know Bob then? Bob. Bob Alton, the choreographer? Oh, no, this was the road company. Jimmy Arneman staged it. Ah, and you closed in Washington. No, I left the show in Washington. Not to come up here for a backers audition, I hope. Oh, no, I've got other things on the fire. <clears throat> You're a singer, dancer? Dancer, mostly. Yes. I could tell when you got off the train. I walk like a duck, you mean? No, you tripped over your suitcase. Oh, sure sign. And with whom did you study dance? Well, see, I'm from Chicago. Uh, I know Chicago quite well. Uh, actually, south of there, do you know Kim Kiki? I'm afraid not. I stood there with Natasha Tukrovitska. I see. Jeepers, this is a small house, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, but they have some swell houses in Hollywood. A bit ostentatious, but swell, yes. You live out there? I'm hoping this enterprise brings me back to New York. You're not working on any movies right now? Just finished one. Moonlight in Rio. Moonlight in Rio? You shot in Brazil? <laughs> no. <laughs> I shot in Culver City, but the beach I shot in Oxnard. Who's in it? Alice Faye, Dick Powell, Ann Miller, Patsy Kelly, Ruritz Melchior, Hoska Heifetz, and Bora Minovich. Sure, I saw that. Really? Because this one hasn't been released yet. Oh. It's good. Good to be back. New York? The theater. An event as ancient as time and as inspiring as man once thought to imitate or appease in its earliest rituals. Rituals we now call the theater. Not moving pictures, but life distilled to a pure, clear ring of truth. Never forget that, for it is your heritage. I, I guess, but... I've only ever done musical comedy. I see. Well, I'm going to take my sherry upstairs, get rid of some of the Union Pacific Railroad I've brought with me. Oh, sure, go ahead. I'd like to look over the lead sheets anyway. See you later. I saw four penguins on my way here. One of them is wearing a polar bear. <laughs> Only kidding. I'm Eddie McEwen. Is this your place? Oh, no, I'm Nikki Crandall. Miss Von Gross and Canoe went up the hill to help some people who are stuck. That's us, and the people behind us, and also a car ahead of us. I got tired of waiting, so I decided to hook You're both the Oriental! I'm oh, sorry. So, you're here for the audition? Yes. Did you write it, or? I'm an actress. Great. Guess we'll be working together. You're an actor? I'm a comedian, actually. I just did Hell's Poppin'. Are you in it? I had a couple of bits, yeah. Left it a month ago, doing some radio. And this is the closet. No, the coat closet's outside in the hall. Out here? Yes. Pardon me, my aching heart. Find my sleeve while we're apart. Oh, uh, you've got music. Yeah, they didn't send you some? I only got the gig yesterday. Other guy got sick, so my agent called and asked if I can sing. And 
Sure, I said. Always say yes, one of my rules. No matter what they ask, yes. This morning, a limo picks me up and parks me in front with a chauffeur. Then we pick up a dame and a mug in Yorkville. What a trick. Driving in a snowstorm, I can't see a thing, so I don't know how the driver can. And on top of that, he's deaf. Deaf? Had to be. I did 40 minutes of my best work, and he don't crack a smile. <laughs> White House merry-go-round. It's nice, too. By Roger Hopewell and Bernice Ross. Hopewell and Ross. Is, is this going to be one of their shows? I, I guess so. Hot dog! Don't get any better than that. Uh, they got a string of hits, and they've never had a flop. I think except for Manhattan Holiday. <laughs> well, what's the other song? Is there a number for a comic? I'm not sure, but I'm sure Mr. Delaney Mays will sign part. Ken Delaney Mays? He's here too. He's the director. <laughs> yes, you didn't know that? I don't know anything about this except I'm getting 25 bucks for a backers audition for some dame named Von Gross and not for... Knutin. No thanks, I just had a Danish. <laughs> no, her name is Miss Von Gross and Knutin. Hey, I'm a comic, remember? Try. Boy, this is the opportunity of a lifetime to be at the start of a hit new show. I guess they're looking for a producer. As I understand it, they have a producer. They're looking for an angel. Who's the producer? Marjorie Baberstock. Marjorie Baberstock, oh, hot dog! Wait a I'm sure she was the woman in your car. Was she wearing meek? You're going back out? I'm going back, period. To New York City. What? Come on, get your coat. It's the same people, the same creative team. Manhattan Holiday. So what they had it done? That scares you back to New York? No, the stage door slasher scares me back to New York. Who? <laughs> Where have you been? Two years ago, three women murdered, all in Manhattan Holiday. So, I, oh yeah. I remember reading about that series. They have to close the show. The chorus girls want to come back to work unless they caught the slasher. And ladies, they never caught him, so let's hit the breeze. If he only killed women, what are you so worried about? Well, how do I know he hasn't changed his preferences? Why would the slasher be here anyway? There are no chorus girls here. I'm gonna go get my coat. This is silly. That was two years ago, and the only similarity is the creative team. Anyhow, it's a dark, sunless day, and you'll never get back to New York in this weather. And the killer could be hidden by the snow, waiting. It's only going to get darker and darker and Hey, darker. you can stop before you get to Dracula's entrance. <laughs> Come on, I'll leave him a note. There must be 25 rooms, 25 rooms in this joint. That don't count the closets. My God, they do exist. Who do? I thought it was only in movies that whenever there's somebody killing everyone and his brother, somebody, usually a dame, goes out from the hen house in the middle of the night to investigate. Have you noticed in those same movies there's always a big strong hero who is not afraid of the dark? I'm a comic, remember? People are always afraid of the dark. Ah, oh, you must be Mr. McEwen. I'm Elsa von Grossenknuten, your hostess. And I suppose you know Miss Baverstock and Mr. O'Reilly since you rode up with them. You hardly know, Elsa, since Mr. McEwen was up front with your driver. I didn't get an opportunity to tell you, Mr. McEwen, that I think it's simply divoon of you to fill in at the last minute like this. Oh, well, thanks. Oh, oh, and have you met Miss Nikki Crandall? Nikki, darling, have you met Miss Baverstock? Why? Mr. McEwen, have you a cold? Uh, there's been a hitch, and I got my dates mixed up, and... We do back in New York. Oh dear, when? Um, now. Oh really? Well, I don't know how you will get there. I suppose it skipped your attention, but we're kind of in the middle of a blizzard. I know, but... Well, I know I for one would be sorry to see you go. I've heard such good things about your work. And of course, Ken DeLamaze, who is directing the audition, knows every agent in Hollywood. Do you have an agent in Hollywood, Eddie? Uh, 
Let's get back to work. What about the stage door slasher? Let him get his own. Elsa, I can't wait for you to hear the show. It is devoon, simply devoon. And I have a budget all worked out right down to the opening night party. We'll hold it at Sardi's, naturally. And if I can charge the actors just a decent cover charge, we'll break even. Elsa, are you redecorating? No, the bookcase has been turned. Has anyone moved the pen holder? Oh, I guess I did that. A secret passage? Elsa, where did it lead? Oh, two other passages. The house is laced with them. Oh, my goodness. Nancy Drew would be in seventh heaven here, wouldn't she? You never told me about this, Elsa, never. Oh, they're nothing, Marjorie. Just your average, ordinary, everyday old secret passageways. Was this a stop on the Underground Railway or something? No. Then why? My father was Baron Wilhelm von Drossenknuten. Ah, yes! You heard of him? Oh! Was there a motion picture about him with Eric von Stroheim, or am I thinking of someone else? Someone else. Oh. Though he was a legend, there have been no motion pictures on him. Obviously, I have a mixed up. This house was built by him after he left the German army at the end of the war. He was a general? He was the Kaiser's chief of espionage and the most brilliant mind and intelligence in all of European history. <coughs> You've heard, perhaps, of the Dreyfus Papers? The Kruger Telegram? How about the Von Moschke Note? Or the Hassendorf Memo? The Von Emich Shopping List? Really? Events which changed the course of history with my father at their center, working in clandestine, covert alliance cloaked in the atmosphere of secrecy, stealth, and subterfuge. But what about the secret passages? Well, that was the only way he could leave the room. Oh. Is all our company met? Ted, darling, how did Boone? Marjorie, mm -hmm. honey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kids, this is Ken De La Maze, your director. Who have you met, Ken? Oh, yeah, uh, uh, hi, I'm Eddie McEwen. I, uh, I'm Eddie McEwen. I just need help with Well, Eddie, it's nice to meet you. Uh, but first things first, we need to learn about the theater. Oh, excuse me! <laughs> Good evening, Jeff Rowell, folks. I need some meat cleaver. Sir, you need a meat cleaver, handsome? For your thirst, John. Well, if you need it, my house is yours, everyone. Make yourselves comfortable. Are you absolutely sure you need a meat cleaver, Helsa? Ja, whoa. Ken, darling, look. A secret passage. Oh, it is very much like the one I used in the circular staircase with Paulette Goddard, Marie Krager, Judith Anderson, George Brent, Peter Lore, John Carradine. Oh, I remember it, Ken. It's some of your best work. <laughs> I bet you do, but this one hasn't been released yet. Like I was saying, the theater. Although this is only an audition for one, it still is theater. So any questions you have about character or interpretation, bring them out. Theater is nothing more or less than life distilled to a pure, clear ring of truth. A ritual as old as... Quick! As in... Someone a martini! I'm in danger of frostbite! Oh, Roger, oh, darling, oh, you oh. look devoon! Simply devoon! Marjorie, sweetheart, I love your new world. Oh, let me introduce actors. This is Roger Hopewell. There to do your music, Roger. Miss Crandall, Mr. McEwen, Mr. O'Reilly. Your eyes are... Very blue. Perhaps I will have a drink now. It makes it so much easier to excuse licentious behavior. <laughs> I was not being licentious, Marjorie. A trifle libidinous, perhaps. A bit lascivious, but not licentious. What is the difference? The placement of the tongue, I imagine. Ken, oh, I can see you there. How wonderful to be working with you again. Bernice and I were talking on our way here, and we said, oh, how wonderful it is to be working with Ken. Now our script will have distilled truth, clean rings, new spark plugs, and all those wonderful things Ken does. And you're the comic. Oh, right. You've seen me work. No, I merely assumed that was why you were wearing only one overshoe. <laughs> oh, I forgot all about that. I must have that martini. Oh, who better performers? Dare you have a drink before attempting to entice Elsa out of her money? Not right now, thank you. Oh, no, thank you. 
I wouldn't mind a shot of bourbon if you got it. Hi, Gay. Bernice, darling. Bernice, how are you? Mwah. 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 I see you've added a bracelet. Uh, mm. Have a drink with us, Bernice. I'm having a, a teeny martini. Well, in that cage, I'll have a huge manhoodin. With a cherry. Fearless, Roger. This actor is Bernice Rock, the librettist. Your test. Hi, gang. Sorry I am late getting downstairs, but the storm froze the lock on my overnight case, and I've been upstairs heating it with a candle. Heating the lock? Martini time. And I kept dripping wax on the rug, so I had to move into the closet, and I set something on fire. <laughs> Set what on fire? Well, see, I don't know because whatever it was burnt up. Then that maid comes in while I'm kneeling under the raging fire and wants to know if I'm Haitian. <laughs> His eyes are very blue. Ain't it something to be with all these famous people? I guess so. Can I love your town? It only costs a good soul. Well, it may cost us ours. Bernice and I have been approached about a motion picture later this year. Do you know who Abbott and Costello are? The two guys in the Bobby Clark thing? Uh, uh, streets of Paris. Paris. Streets of Paris. Well, Universal has signed them. We've been approached by some songs. Ooh. That reminds me. The, the boy, the lead dancer from that show. Grover Champion? Gower Champion. We should think about him. I, I know you're only in first draft, Bernice, but think about taking that long, long, long section where the sailor is telling the girl how beautiful she is and making it a ballet. I didn't think the section was all that long. Ever notice in Bernice's writing, whenever someone tells a woman how beautiful she is, the scene goes on forever? That comes from understanding romance, Roger, a subject you are somewhat hazy on. <sighs> that comes from writing in front of that smoked mirror on your desk. That's what it comes from. All right, kids, may we get to work? We're all together once more, are we not? Is everyone comfortable? We're fine, Elsa. We're about to start rehearsal. Uh, oh, does anyone need a drink? Sure. Heavens, how dark it's getting. And it's only just past one. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, and the snow just won't stop, will it? What are you having, Bernice? Oh, uh, what's closest? Excuse me. Can I get But your cocoa and is snowed in. Dress! Well, there's nothing for it, but I shall go to the kitchen and whip up some quick lunch. We wouldn't want you all hungry for the big show now, would we? Come, Elsa, let's see if we remember how to do sour rotten. Sour rotten? Oh, how inspired. She's chosen a dish that even if she ruins, no one can tell the difference. <laughs> all right. May we please start rehearsal, since that is the reason we are gathered here. Is it? Hasn't anyone wondered why this particular creative team has been gathered in this? Particular house. The Packers audition. Whose last creative effort was Manhattan Holiday? The show in which Phoebe McAllister, Elsa's friend, was murdered. Another drink, King, you look as though you need one. It's just the memory of that terrible time, Roger. I had hoped it was forgotten. Obviously it hasn't been. Though Elsa is eccentric. And though she slithers through life as though she were Gail Sondercart, her behavior today strikes me as more batty than usual. If that's possible. And I believe we've been gathered here for a dual purpose. Which is? She wants to observe us. Together. To what end? Excuse me. But who was murdered? Uh, were you in New York two years ago? Two years ago, I was off visiting me old Nither in County Cork. You were visiting a Nither? Three members of our dancing chorus were murdered. And you suspect the killer was a part of the show? We don't know. Of course we know! We play New Haven, murder. Boston, murder. Philadelphia, terrible, terrible reviews. And a murder closes us in New York. It has to be someone with the show, Flynn. See, I told you, someone with the show. And you think the killer is in this house? Yes. <laughs> You're not knowing much about murderers, then, are you? Once free and away, a killer may occasionally be drawn back to the scene of the crime. But once free, he would never, ever, associate himself with anyone who'd have reason to suspect him. Hey, how do you know so much about murder? 
Be bitter. Hey, be bitter, be bitter. God rest their souls. We're police officers. And you're a tenor. Sounds like a part of the game to me, Mr. Hopewell. In real life, murders filled with rage, quite sudden, quite emotional, not filled with secret passageways, just blood-soaked carpets. What blood-soaked carpets? <clears throat> Excuse me, I thought I heard something about a blood-soaked carpet. We were talking about real life, Helsa. Although God knows why, since we're here to do a musical comedy. Foreman von Grosskruten wanted me to tell you that lunch will be served in about 30 minutes. Until then, here's the old dose. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, can we please start rehearsal? Since, Roger, that is the only reason we are gathered here, I just thought it'd be worth mentioning. Oh, well, if you think there to be a killer on the loose, best not stand in front of the bookcase. It's a secret passage. Oh, good heavens! Are we going to sit here all night in our pajamas and tell ghost stories? Or shall we get started with rehearsal? Actors, over here. Bernice, Roger, at the piano. Sorry there is no bratwurst, Mr. O'Reilly, since you are so interested in things German. Bernice, have you... Hmm? Have you decided what page of the book we're going to do yet? What? The book. What? Bernice, has the silliness of Rogers frightened you? Oh, no, no, of course not. I was just thinking, we're all warm and cozy in this lovely, old, kind of weird house with secret passages and blood-soaked carpets and sort of isolated by a snowstorm. Um, I have a rather troubling announcement. I hope none of you have to reach New York by this afternoon because the phone seems to have gone dead. And now the phone seems to have gone dead. Help! We're all going to be murdered! Help! But he's for heaven's sake, there's no doubt about! the direction they're looking. Uh, hello, Governor! Uh, Oxford! Tea! Crumpets! Shakespeare! British things! Eddie. 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 <laughs> your talent is just as special as Bert Lars, but I think there will be other roles that ring closer to the truth you project. All right. Yeah, uh, yeah sure. Uh, thanks a lot, Mr. Delamaze. <laughs> oh, what did he say? He said no. Oh, heck, even uh, if I'm just second banana, this could be the big break I've been looking for. Aren't you excited? Don't they usually get stars for the stuff I'm reading? <laughs> yeah, well, 
You never know. Uh, you live in New York? Yes. Uh, whereabouts? West 58, between Broadway and Amsterdam. Yeah. I live on 37th, across from Madison Square Garden. I used to live near there. 48th, the dance belt. Huh. You live uh, alone? I have two roommates. Got a boyfriend? <laughs> Did have. Uh, he joined the Navy last year. Oh. Yeah, Navy's not bad. I was thinking of joining up myself, you know, before I get drafted. Aren't you a little old to be drafted? Uh, yeah, right now. But see, the way things are going to go is I better get a name for myself in entertainment. PDQ. That way, if I'm drafted, they'll put me in the entertainment section of the Army. You want to kill them with laughs, huh? They've got such units. A comics battalion. They hit the beach right after the magician! It's called special services. Oh, and? They pass out ping pong balls! Uh, you know, I'd have known you were a dancer even if you never said so. Yeah? You talk straight out, all like a guy. And most dames don't talk that way. Dancers do. Of course, I'm talking showbiz, not ballet. You date a lot of dancers? I, I don't date a lot of anything. So, you haven't got a girl? Nope. See, most dames, they don't want to get serious with the comment. Yeah, but that's okay. That's the way things are laid out. What's laid out? The hero gets the girl, and the comic... The comic gets the laughs. In the movies? And in real life. It's, it's pretty much the same. I wouldn't know. I, I haven't met any heroes. Did you meet a comic? Just one. I'm gonna look over the second act ballad. Yeah. Uh, you believe in chemistry? Chemistry? Yeah, I, you know, you see someone and something happens. Oh, I don't know. Well, it's happening here. Uh, oh, Riley and the maid. Uh, okay. They really have eyes for each other. We're seeing the start of a hot affair. Yeah, I'm sure they just sent something in common. Did it ever uh, happen to you in chemistry? No. Well, what about your boyfriend? Well, we grew up together. He was always just there. Until now. Yeah. Never happened to me either, uh, chemistry. Probably just in the movies. No, it happened to my father. He was on the corner, she was on the bus. They locked eyes. Wham! He chased that bus for five blocks. It was your mother? No. <laughs> Never saw her again after that. My father used to tell me, Eddie, when it happens, you'll know. It's chemical. Unless it's the number 17 to Ozone Park. That's an express. It can happen, you just gotta be looking, is all. Oh, we all ready for act two! How you all doing, Miss Vaughn Grossman? Well, we just had coffee! Okay, she wanted me to lay out some coffee, so you wanted to go to the kitchen. She brought this one to the oven, so light the oven. So you folks are in the show business, huh? Yes. Do you attend the theater, Mr. Kelly? And no, not that much. I had a cousin at the Hot Mikado at the World's Fair. Dinner will be around 7. Uh, to tie you over, I'll have Hilsa bring in some leader cards. We're, we're fine, Elsa. We need to get started. One other thing. Uh, yesterday, while cleaning out your rooms in anticipation for your arrivals, Guess what we found? Baby McAllister's Deco Makeup Kit! It had somehow been packed with the, um, uh, uh, showgirl costumes when the show closed and went to Princeton. Showgirl costumes? I thought Princeton was a men's school. Only in the daytime, obviously. It's for a show they do. They have a, a kick line. Yes, well, last week someone there found the case and recognized the name as one of the murder victims. So they say they, uh, they mailed it to the police. Who thereupon mailed it to me? 
And then I kind of left it in a closet and forgot about it until yesterday. And with all of us reunited, I became curious. I opened it. And what do you think I found oh, inside? I, I don't want to hear this. It's going to be some finger or something. Ugh. A notebook. A round notebook. A round notebook? No, sorry, sorry. A notebook with many uh, notes, spirals, uh, doodles, phone numbers. There's a lot of phone numbers in the notebook. And um, one of them, is something's in my eye. Oh, one of them caught my eye. <laughs> the last night. The night B.B. was murdered, the very last appointment. An appointment with whom? Uh, don't know. But, but they were, they were wearing a watch. Oh, no, sorry, uh, the time. The book gives time and place. That night was probably just, a, probably just an appointment to go over a key change or something. Couldn't be that. That were Dr. Norris at the theater. No, they weren't. Weren't what? Uh, uh, Singing? What? Who wasn't singing? No, sorry, they weren't singing in an elevator? I need some coffee. Well, that night, me and the set designer went out to eat dinner at Toffinetti's. Couldn't have been Ken, because the set designer was with me at the Blue Ribbon. No, Marjorie, I know. That was the first night we went off. I certainly ought to know where my own damn stage manager was, Ken. What are you getting so defensive about, Marjorie? An alibi, obviously. Mm -hmm. The book doesn't say at the theater. The last appointment was at the hotel. With whom? No one was there. We only used a suite there as a staff room. Uh, excuse me, Miss Von Grossen. Awful, awful. And, yes? Well, I'm pretty sure you should put that book somewhere safe and as far from you as possible. Because if it tie it to the killer, I'm sure he'd kill to get it. Well, he doesn't know I have it, does he? He does now. Well, for that to be true, Mr. McEwen, the killer would have to be in this very room. <laughs> Let's not be ridiculous. Of course it isn't one of us. We're show people. So, on with Act the Second, as Shakespeare might have said. He may have, but I doubt if he ever did. Oh, Ken, do you mind if I watch? You know how I adore the rehearsal process. No, it will ruin the audition for you, Elsa. Oh, no, just a soupçon. No, really. Well, I... this is my house. Dear God, Marjorie! Let's her watch. I need to get started. Sit here, Elsa. All right. Act two begins. We just had coffee! Roland von Grossknut didn't mention that Herr O'Reilly preferred chocolate. All right. Act two begins okay. with... Okay. Act two, White House merry-go-round. On stage are Beth and Trudy. There are also some page boys. Sounds to Boon. Simply to Boon. Excuse me. I fear this hot chocolate has gone and given me a terrible headache. And I've noticed I've not needed in this number, so if you don't mind, I'll be stepping out for some aspirin. Oh, you poor dear boy. Come, it's in the pantry. Okay, come right back. That is the format. Here's how it goes. Biff is opening mail from Trudy's constituents, all of whom have advice on how to run the country. This leads to the opener. Everyone can do it better. All right, so following Bernice's opener, we have... Roger. Biff, Trudy, and I'll do all the page boys. <laughs> I'll bet you will. Have a drink, Marjorie. It'll coat your tongue. What is it now? Try the light switch. Where is it? Oh, ouch. OK, everyone just calm down. I'm going to the basement. It may be a power failure. Are there any candles? Ah! Oh, what was that? An owl in the library. This is making me very nervous. Calm down, Bernice. Hey, I'm not Bernice. Stop rubbing my neck. Sorry. <laughs> just remain calm. I'm sure it's just a snowstorm. Miss Von Gross and Canute will be back with some candles. Is everyone here? Didn't I hear the tiniest scream just a moment ago? If that was me, I bumped into the piano. We're fine, Bernice. Okay, that's Roger and Ken, the performers. I'm here. And me. Marjorie? because I plugged the toaster in. Is everyone all right? We're fine, Elsa. We're moving as quickly as we can. Oh, no hurry. I haven't even started the white sauce. White sauce? 
on sauerkrautsen? All right, kids, uh, back to work. From the top. Ready? One, two, three, four. acting like a typical producer. Someone has pulled the main power. Has anyone... Right now, I want everybody where I can see it. Oh, I know what to look for clues. 
I'm in charge of this investigation. I say the same here. Whoa, whoa. What investigation? Murder investigation. I'm a cop. Dude! <laughs> Killing's working too fast, Ms. Brown Ross and Newton. I'm Sergeant Michael Kelly of the New York City Police Department. Here on the case of the stage door slasher. So it's not an audition? Only for a killer, it seems. Mm, just my luck. <laughs> I told you! I told you! And I told you! But no! I'm just a silly songwriter. I did go to Boston Conservatory, you know. I think this exposure was unwise, Sergeant. The, the killer didn't go for you in the notebook. It, went, it didn't just happen twice, okay? It happened three times. Maybe four of the kind of right. And who was maybe three? There are blood stains by the French door. There's no one else missing. Nobody else we know about. Are you saying there could be someone missing who wasn't here in the first place? Okay, but if you're the police, then what was all that business about notifying them in regards to BB's notebook? Said it. You see, Roger, I was to be the bait. When the killer came for me and the notebook, Sergeant here would capture him. Clever, yes? It was until you told us all about it. Obviously, some other people are more dangerous than the killer than this book. Perhaps it was a combination of those people and the book that worried the killer. It's come out of the way the book is useless. Exactly the way I got it, I still maintain we have a look at these blueprints. You know, the chase path the back. Okay, okay, so let me get this straight. So all that nonsense was just made up in order to... No, the book is Rue McCoy. It was sent to us from Princeton last week. It contains information that made us feel good. What sort of information? The last name. Piccadilly 1020. My God! What is it, Bernice? I just got the new second act opener. Give me a pin. <laughs> oh, that is so annoying. <laughs> okay. So the Piccadilly was our hotel in New York. But what's the 1020? Your room. My room! And oh. the rest of the artistic staff. B.B. McAllister's last appointment, same night as the murder. Ah, uh, yes, that's the stuff Elsa was talking about earlier. Well, obviously he didn't worry the killer too much. But why should it? The staff's... Oh my God. The key was on the desk! Everyone, stage managers, designers, everyone had access to those rooms, but... You reopened the investigation just based on that one appointment? We were hoping it might be. Well, obviously it didn't. Obviously it did. There are two murders. Oh, wait a second. The thing I can't understand is why Dee Dee was in the hotel at all. Show's off the road and everyone's at home. Now what's a chorus girl do on her day off? Huh? Oh. Yeah. Sleeps. Well, she certainly wouldn't go where a murderer was loose. I would think she would want to spend that time with her friends. But in you, Elsa? Poor Phoebe had many friends. Ken? So many. Okay, so there's a list following the appointment. 2222 two, two, Toshu's Leo. Then a set of numbers in parentheses. 288129. Uh, eight, eight, well, Leo could be something astrological. Isn't 22 a type of gun? Yeah, caliber. We wondered about that, but there was no gun involved. 2222. Two, two. What? 2222, Toshu's Leo Leotard. Sounds like it was for some kind of ballet class. Why'd she wear a tutu is beyond me. What's it look like? A tutu? Um, it's a stiff little skirt, sticks out in the front. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, yeah, she had it on. What? You didn't release that to the press, but she had it on. Don't yell at it. Oh. Murdered in a tutu. How were they wearing their hair? Hair? Yeah, was that the same too? Now that you mention it, it was. Tight. And pulled back like a school teacher. Ballet dancer. This last is killing ballet dancers. Why? He probably sat through Lysopedes one time too many. <laughs> what I mean is, they were dressed like ballet dancers. As for some kind of audition. Or... Anyone want to hear the new lyric? I think I've got the real flavor of Washington with this one. It's called Ways, Means, and Mischief. I will take it from the top. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Poor Bernice. She works herself much too hard. 
Well, he's lost? Elsa, we saw you half naked and dead fall from the closet into Bernice's arms. Oh, Bernice! Perhaps it was someone else. I was in the basement gathering potatoes for the witch's one. She's still out there, dead. Who is dead? Elsa, have you a twin? Ja, sisters, I'm a triple X, but they are in Germany. Uh, Elsa, someone who looks very much like you was murdered here today. I will look. My mother and father worked in a government printing plant as laborers in 1923. They died. Oh. Then a cotton, which marks the equivalent of five American dollars, fell on them, and they were crushed. Oh. My sister and I were raised by relatives. We saw each other only on Venox to Ben to decorate the Venox to Bomb and give us Venox Kashenka. Gesundheit. <laughs> my point is, I did not know my sisters. Well, that woman has no sense of humor. Elsa, did Elsa accompany you out of town during any showing of Manhattan Holiday? No, Elsa stayed here at the house. Oh my gosh, identical triplets, homicidal maniac. Secret passages? Yeah, this is beginning to look like one of those uh, Hollywood mysteries you direct, Mr. Delamaze. I didn't know you directed the mystery, kid. <laughs> one. Murder at the Biltmore with <laughs> William Powell, Myrna Loy, Sidney Blackmer, Matt Pendleton, <laughs> and Alicia Cook Jr. Has that been released? No. Have you seen it? I think so. I don't think she looks a thing like me. Uh, but Elsa! She's a spin image. Were either of your sisters ballet dancers by any chance? Dancers! Got in Hilda! Hilda lives in Strottisland, working in a boat yard making sales. Helga waits tables at a beer garden. Now, if you will excuse me, I must get back to the dinner. Wait, you're saying that's not your sister out there? Anything is possible, but I believe my sister is to be in Germany. That woman out there is an exact life. My grandfather put the shore in Brooklyn, perhaps. It is only a train ride to here. Next war? Mr. O'Reilly is dead also? We don't know. I told you she had eyes for him. I kill her on the loose and all she cares for is O'Reilly. Well, obviously Hels is lying, though I can't imagine why. She's covering for him. I thought espionage was in your blood. It is. It definitely is. It's just a bit sluggish at the moment. Maybe Helsa's sister was on her way here and was killed before she knew she arrived. So then why wouldn't she identify her? Perhaps Helsa's sister is the slasher. Wait, but if her sister is the slasher, then who slashed her? It's all too confusing. Nah, it's simple. Look. You got a sister selling sausage and sauerkraut in Stuttgart, and a sister sewing sales somewhere. Strassland. So, either Hilda from Stuttgart and Helga from Strassland, uh, while seeking out her sister in a snowstorm in a swanky secluded section of Chipotle, was hacked by a homicidal hacker who thought Hilda or Helga was Elsa. Now ask yourself, why? Ask myself why? I don't even know what you just said. Ask myself why what? Not why what, why who? Why who what? Not why who what, why why what? Why, why, who, what, why? What? Because before you ask who, you have to ask why. And how. How what? Mr. just agreeing, you know, and how. Maybe it depends on when. When, when what? what? Please, if you're going to do that again, I need another drink. Now, let me see that book. Is Helsa the stage door slasher? Come on, it's what we're all thinking. Of course it's what we're all thinking. But why would Helsa murder three women? Jealousy. Tom Holm. Of your friends, you said you had many. I said Bibi had many. <laughs> really, Roger, if you're going to sell the works of others as your own, I prefer you stick with Jerome Kern. You do that so much better. I do not steal from Jerome Kern. He certainly does not. Thank you, Bernice. It's Sigmund Romberg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fine. Fine, let's all be viciously funny about my exceptional talent, which strikes me as a mattress to get off the subject. Which is, 
which one of us might have had a motive. All right. Shall we begin with the well-known fact that you hate dancers? Only when they sing. <laughs> you did demand those three be out of the number. But not with a knife. My point is, we can come up with a motive for any of us. Even me. Maybe they were all pregnant or something. My point is, I do not think the killer is in this room. What about O'Reilly? We haven't seen him since the blackout. Maybe dead. Or in those tunnels. Well, we won't know if we don't look. I'm going to serve dinner, and then I suggest a beret into those walls. There is another possibility. Perhaps Helsa is her sister. What? Just something that happened earlier today, when I attempted to kiss her good morning. There was something different. She kisses her maid good morning? <laughs> okay, now I'm going to get to solve this thing. I want to reconstruct the moments before the crime. I want everyone to show me where they were standing in the line. Oh, my God. No, this can work. Ellery Queen does it all the time. All right, all right. I was over here. Bernice, where were you? I was, she was over there. there. Uh, we were here. And poor Marjorie was in that chair. <laughs> Ew. and Elsa should be left alone. Wait, kid, I wanted to show you the new second act opener. Personally, I thought what we have been fine. Marjorie hated it. Marjorie was dead, Bernice. I don't think you should allow a dead woman's opinion to influence you. Kid! Ugh. I can't believe one of them could be the slasher. No, I doubt they are. You got me a whole other thing. Hey, you coming to the kitchen? In a second. Did you find something new? It's addresses and appointments. She refers to things she's done that day as some kind of a log. LN, small w, slash k. What's with Kathy? It's another dancer in the show. We already marked all those notes out. The ones we can make sense of it. I think it's a code. A code? Why would she keep a code? Well, sometimes there are just lists of numbers. Phone numbers. But there's not always an exchange. Here's Indicop, Murray Hill, and then rows of numbers. Okay. Bank accounts. Maybe secret bank accounts. Maybe. I got a theory, and it's based on plain old-fashioned food work. Maybe serial numbers. Observation. Observation, that's the thing. And if I'm right, then someone I know is in very great danger, and I think I know who that someone. Ah! Maybe they're using numbers as letter substitutes. Letter substitutes? Where'd you learn about that? When you were a kid, did you ever send away to Jack Armstrong or the orphan Annie for a secret decoder? Don Winslow of the Navy. I got a ring. Well, I'll use the orphan Annie system. Let's try to break it. What we need is paper. Oh, holy mackerel, the desk oh My hey, sir! Where's the cop? It's another secret passage! Well, are you crazy? Don't go in there. There are steps leading down. I want to see what's down here. If you run into the slasher, don't plie. It looks like a wine cellar. Great, now come back up. I can't believe you're doing that. You're down there in the dark with a raving lunatic with a knife or a saber. When you can be up here in the light where it's safe. Oh my god! Hi, all the dancers are out right now, but if you'd like to leave a message, that's. Oh no, I, I, I got. A cut earlier. Uh, ah, ah, Frank got the answer. It's my regular barber. <laughs> oh, I get it. You think I'm a dancer? No, I'm a comic. Where is he? 
Oh, mom now! Did you check me in there? Some kind of a joke? Well, I, I, how'd you get out of there? There's a lover next to the door. Well, the slasher was here. The slasher was here? Uh, yeah, in a, a long raincoat with a, a bag over his head. What'd he look like? Like a long raincoat with a bag over his head. No, I mean tall, short. Both, maybe. Who knows? I was too busy looking at the razor. We have to go tell the others. No, be one of them. It was after this, but I grabbed it and ran. Gee, Eddie, you're kind of brave. Nah, just fast. See, when you play some of the shows, I Which one of them do you think it could be? You know what? I got me a whole theory based on observation. O'Reilly! Oh, oh, we thought you were dead. Sure, and so did somebody else. I was in on me head and left to die. When was this? When I was going for the aspirin. Well, I sure hope you got the chance to take a couple. And when I come to, I found myself in a tunnel. And I've had the devil's own time trying to get out. There have been two murders here. And what's more, it's not even an audition. The setup to catch the slasher. Murders? Who? Miss Baberstock and someone who's either Hilda, Helga, or Helsa. Was? Someone who we think is Helsa's twin sister. Fell right out of the closet. And Helsa? Is she all right? <laughs> She's okay. <laughs> she was thinking about you too. Was she now? I think she's a fine soup of a lass. I think I have a spot of brandy to ward off the chill. Oh, no, no, no. I'll, I'll grab it. So, Mr. O'Reilly, how long have you lived in America? What? I asked how long you've lived in America. You are Irish born. As Patty's cow. And where in Ireland are you from? Sure, you're familiar with Ireland, Colleen. I've never been there, no. Oh, well, there's a. Thank you. There's a spot in County Blarney where the sun rises over the. the. the McMara Mountains. It settles over the fine village of. McGillicuddy. You know, you should have. Known better than ask an Irishman where he's from. We could have been here all day. Have I seen you on anything on Broadway, perhaps, Mr. O'Reilly? Or do you write a book about me, miss? Dinner is served. Mr. O'Reilly, you returned to us. Uh, somebody knocked him on the head and left him to die. You're kidding! Oh, we're gonna leave something terrible in this house, haven't we? However, the vicious law is ready. It, and, Where's Sergeant Kelly? Oh, we thought he was with you. Perhaps he went to wash up. Come, everyone else is in the dining room. We'll eat and then we'll get down to the serious business of the evening. I don't think he's Irish. Yeah, easy enough to tell. We'll give him some more brandy and see if he sings a song, writes a poem, or gets in a fight. No, it seems I went and forgot me drink. I'll be there with you in a second. Elsa! They tell me your sister is dead. Are you in mourning, Elsa? Come out. I just want the dog. Go! <laughs> Elsa, where are you? Uh, we need to track him. 
coming from two directions. Nikki, I want you to go in through there. I'll go in through the billiard room. That's the billiard room? Yes. It's interesting you put it over here next to the parlor. It used to be over by the music room, but you see, we, we, we could have it by the music room. That's insane. Can we hold the architectural discussion till later? He may be killing her. I am going in. I'll go with. Here. Guy as easy as one. Take this flashlight so you can see what you're up against. See it? Who wants to see it? Play the radio very loud in this room so we can always find our way back. And if you can find the red, net, red network of NBC, Phil Spatoni has his all-girl orchestra. Be careful in there, it's a labyrinth. Stay close together. <laughs> Buried under snow in this blizzard, fast reaching catastrophic proportions. Transportation is halted. Governor Liam and Mayor LaGuardia have declared that a state of emergency. My God, all we need now is a power failure. <sighs> Your mouth to God's ear. There are some storm lanterns in the pantry. Come help me get them. Ow! Ugh, spooks the piano! That was me, Roger! Are you coming, Roger? Bernice, are you on the floor? I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to sit here with my bottle of wine and relax. All right, Bernice, we'll come back for you very quickly. Come on. There's mischief in Washington, and guess who has to pay? There are mix-ups in Washington. Uh, who is it? You have not seen me. Not in years. Morgan! Ken, where are you? I'm in the corner! You will not tell them you saw me. My lips are sealed. Have you ever been dragged to a tunnel, tried to a run, and beeped? Do I have to answer that? <laughs> Remember, one word and you die! She's in the closet! Who? Elsa, she's in the closet! What are you doing in there? <laughs> Got a gun? What does an Irish tenor do with a gun? I'm not Irish. I'm Italian. Lieutenant Tony Garibaldi on the case of the stage door slasher. Helsa's the slasher and she's on her way up the river. You hear me, Helsa? The jig's up. Come out with your hands high. All right, Helsa. I'm counting to ten. Eins. He's white. I'm in German. Well, Drain, beer, boom, thump, five. Up. No wonder there's so poor over there. Zine! You couldn't get it if you wanted to, but the door is locked. <laughs> then open it! <laughs> ah! Ah, uh, hi! Uh, Oh boy, am I glad to see you. Flashlight stopped working. Couldn't see a thing. But I held her hand and we got that. Come on, Nikki. We're home. <laughs> Where's Nikki? <laughs> what? <laughs> Hold on. You got a gag in your mouth. Sid, get that gag out. <laughs> Did you just pass? The maid in there? Uh, who knows? It's too dark to see a thing. Helsa is the stage door slasher. Yeah. Helsa? A and she's in there with Nikki? I'll take care of this. Oh, this is the job of the police. He is the police. Lieutenant Tony 
Somebody. He's on the case of the slasher. Really? Out of where? Headquarters. What division? Eerie Crimes. Eerie Crimes Division. Yeah, that's a new thing the commissioner just opened up and you got a badge? Sure. Sure he has a badge, just show it to us. Show him. <laughs> yeah, I'd show you the badge. Right. Yeah! All right, over there. Hands up, nobody move. It's my badge, right? You're the one that punked me upside the head, right? I needed the ID. Almost worked until Bumble knocked over here. Ruined everything. Hey, just a minute. <laughs> yeah. So I nobody. Anywhere. Be careful, Elsa. Oh, <coughs> oh, hello, everybody. Welcome. Hands up and over there. And stop your squawking, sister. What's gotten into O'Reilly? He is not O'Reilly. Yeah. I am Claus Stansdorf of the Geheimstaatspolizei. The Gestapo? <laughs> Temporarily assigned to the New York Consulate Unit as a cultural attaché. <laughs> What's the Gestapo? What's the thing for us last? What I want is for you, Sergeant Kelly, is to take the lanterns and lead the way into the closet. You can go to hell. <gasps> Be dang, Sergeant Kelly. I could have killed you in the tunnels, but I did not. Why? Professional courtesy. Take the lantern. No. Oh. I assume everybody should turn their heads. Because the bullet from this gun makes quite a large hole. Don't make a move, Daddy, or you'll be pushing up daisies. Oh. Ensign Nicole Crandall, United States Naval Intelligence. Oh. We're going to need some rope. In the pantry, I'll go get it. Um, I will, I will go with her. <clears throat> I am not staying here with all these guns waving around. Bernice! Scotch and soda. Oh, never I'll mind. The piano drop head. Uh, hey, where'd you learn to do that? Basic training. Yeah, it's pretty basic, all right. Okay, Ensign, I'll take it from here. So, naval intelligence, I'll, I'll be darned. We've been after this guy for three weeks. Yeah, no, no wonder you were always hopping in the tunnels. You were packing a heater in your bag. He's kind of a spy or something? Worse, he's a Nazi saboteur. His name is Dieter Wenzel. You have the wrong man! Shut your trap! Wenzel? That's right, Helsa's brother. And what's he doing here? Well, the Nazis landed this guy and five others on Long Island three weeks ago. We got four of them in Sag Harbor posing as novelists. My name is Claus Stansdorf. Baloney! The saboteurs had false identities, Half a million dollars in a mission to blow up installations all over America to effectively retard our nation's communication system. Gee, and I thought the post office was taking care of that. <laughs> but this guy and his buddy Franz Becker decided the money was more important than the fatherland and took off with the do re -mi. So, where's this guy's buddy Becker? The Captain Jammer kid here bumped him off with the greenbacks, right, Prince? Wrong. I took Becker because he was a traitor, dumb cough. Hey, who you calling dumb cough? Her I'm calling dumb cop. You, I call bumble nuts. Just wanted to get that straight. <laughs> okay, so how'd you get this guy straight? See, naval intelligence knew he had a sister. We figured it was a long shot, but he might head for her. They sent you alone and get to kill him? I was the only agent who could sing harmony. Listen to me, all of you. Your lives are in great danger. Hey, pal, we're all ears. My name is not Dieter Wenzel. Dieter Wenzel is an ad wearer. Military counterintelligence. He's also a homicidal maniac. A uh, homicidal maniac? How'd he get into the German army? We recruited him. <laughs> and he's going out okay. Of course. And where is he now? He is? Oh, I got the rope. I'll tie him up. I'm very good with half hitches. There's blood on these books. The knife came through here. Uh, Moby Dick. I don't know how the knife got through that. I couldn't finish the first chapter. <laughs> <laughs> Dear God! It was stabbed through the bookcase. I'll check the hall. No, wait! Oh, it's useless. That passage branch is open to five others. Ew. I, uh, uh, he was stabbed through the bookcase and oh, practically fell on Bernice. Oh, Bernice, are you all right? 
I, I can't work with these people, Roger. They have, they have no respect for an artist. It's casting squirrels before pine. I'm very drunk. <laughs> no good. It splits up five different ways inside. Look, we're gonna have to take things step at a time. So a few of you just help me get this guy out the rest of the others. It's a constant substitution. Oh, poor BB Spoke. Someone was trying to work out the code. I was. I love codes. I like playing Bach. See, she was substituting consonants on a triplet basis. How's that work? It's very simple. Look. This here becomes A, um, P, P again, L, uh, apples, and here it repeats again, apples, oranges, apples again, peppermint, some sort of ongoing shopping list. Apples, oranges, corn, peppermint. What do you make of that? Could be some sort of salad. Really, I would think the peppermint might tend to dominate. Well, not if it weren't allowed to stand for too long. Perhaps the sweetness of the oranges would counteract... Word substitute. Word substitutes, of course! It's another code! Pardon me, but the beef is getting drunk. Elsa, put I your hands up! Hey, I beg your pardon? We know you're the slasher, Elsa! You dragged me with a butcher knife! Ah, when you open the closet door. Nine. In addition to keeping the dinner warm all night, I've been running through the tunnel trying to keep from being martyred by my homicidal maniac of the Brosa. Peter Benzel? John. He came here seeking refuge, posing as an Irish tenor. Oh, Riley? John. But he's dead. They're burying him in the snowdrift right now. I will look. John, that is Dieter. Poor Dieter. He was a very famous cabaret entertainer in Berlin, you know. But now he lies dead in a snowdrift oh. with strangers. Yes, I do hope there isn't such a sudden thaw. I don't know what the milkman would think. Ugh. He was trying to kill you earlier? John, he knew I would turn him into the authorities. You shot him, did you? He was stabbed through the bookcase. Ach, so! Mein Gott! Three panels! Oh, what about them? There's something in there. Something evil. I brushed against it in the dark. Have you seen it? It is all in black. Oh. It is not human. It reeks of death. It is demonic. And it makes for no! Sure, but you couldn't have us back on ice, can edit your Yes, I suppose so. Something evil! Oh, I'm going to that policeman again! Did Elsa actually try to threaten you? Well, she held a butcher knife, but then we slammed the door in her face. So she could be telling the truth then. Even if she is, I think we should get out of here as fast as possible, blizzard or no blizzard. If she is, it's all the more important that we figure out this code. D okay, so what does it say about the night of the murder? Piccadilly 1020, Tutu Tosha's Leo Corn. What's another word for corn? No, no, no. But I am the only one with even the slightest knowledge of these passages. I have to go. It's too dangerous for a woman. Not with this. The Derringer, which my father, Baron Wilhelm von Grossensmuten, used as the personal bodyguard to the Archduke Ferdinand. You know how to use that thing? Sergeant, I've shot the O out of every stop sign in Westchester County. <laughs> That's good enough for me. Okay, so here's the plan. What Listen, everyone. We figured out part of the code in Bibi's book. The night of the murder, it says Piccadilly 1020, Tutu Toshu's Leo Corn. Corn? What's corn? A word substitute, we think. You think. Okay, so he was a dancer, wasn't she? Maybe she had her. Oh. No. no. That's <laughs> disgusting. Okay. Uh, here's the plan. We go in from the three passages out of here. One gun to a passage. Fourth gun stays in here in case the fiend or whatever it is comes in through the walls. You go in through there. Eddie, you put me out of those storms pretty good. You take this and go in through there. Uh, hey, if this don't have a flag that pops out and says bang, I don't know what to do with it. Oh. Boy, I've played some tough crowds in my day, but this one takes the cake. <laughs> Ensign, you stay here. Hi, yeah, sir. I'd like to look over this code anyways. Is there any place where the passageways don't leave? The pantry. You three go in the pantry. That way we'll be safe. Safety is exactly what I had in mind. Come on, Moniz. We're moving on. Oh, good. Anything open this late? Uh, all set? Let's go. Be 
careful, everyone. I warn you, it's a real maze in there. Hey, uh, you gonna be okay? Yeah, are you going to be okay? I asked you first. Well, listen, if I don't make it out of those walls, cancel my head Friday. All right, Roger and Bernice are all tucked in. In the pantry, surrounded by pots and pans. Let's hope they don't get into a fight over a lyric. <laughs> Shouldn't you stay with them? I figured I should be with you. You have a job watching three secret passages at once. Thanks. Still working on the code? These words as food substitutes, I just can't figure them. Yes. And locked in BB's head forever, I'm afraid. I guess so. I must say, I'm impressed with you, Ensign, on your performance as the chorus girl. Quite convincing, though. The walk. Trip over the suitcase is a nice touch. Well, that kind of was me. Yes, yes, and your language. Swell. How typically crass the ring of pure banal truth is. Well, see, that kind of was me, too. It was hopeful, you know, knocking around to the Great White Way before I joined the Navy. Did you have a chance to audition for me? Oh, I don't know, Mr. De La Maze. I auditioned for so many things. I think I would have singled you out. Oh, I doubt that. As different from the rest. Different? You didn't see yourself as a tawdry, shop-worn, run-of-the-mill chorus girl? Oh, gee, I thought they were all pretty nifty. Nifty. I suspect the chase would be going poorly right about now. I think I'd be hearing shots ringing from the walls. Wait a minute. Maybe I did audition for you. Did you direct I Married an Angel? That was Josh Logan. Let's see, I tried out for the boys from Syracuse? Sigmund Ronberg. Sing out the news? Who's who? George Abbott, Leonard Stillman. Who's who? People! What? She was substituting foods for people! She was probably keeping appointments she didn't want anyone knowing about. Anyone being healthy, naturally. So the night of the murder was Piccadilly 1020, Tutu Toshu's Leo Korn. Who was Korn? Corny jokes? A comedian at a show, maybe? Like, oh my god. <laughs> Philo Vance would have figured it out much sooner, my pretty. <laughs> Now you and I are going to take a swell <laughs> trip. Naturally, Bernice needs another drink, so I've been elected to... Oh my god. <laughs> Don't do anything foolish, Roger. I do not want to deal with this. I absolutely refuse to deal with this. I bet you think I'm crazy. Well, I'm not crazy. Ken, I have no intention of getting into a psychological discussion with you. God knows I'm not feeling secure enough myself to hear your problems. How silly. I must have taken a wrong turn at the water heater. Ken, what are you doing? <laughs> Don't tell me you're the stage door slasher. I am. I just told you not to tell me. Elsa, put your gun on the piano. Get out of there! Oh, excuse me. Bernice! <laughs> I have the wrong room. Nope. Don't get 
Mm-hmm. Elsa, stand up straight. Uh, Bernice, clean up. Mm-hmm. And Nikki, beautiful Nikki, you stay dressed the way you are. Nice, nice. Act natural! Don't look at the gun. Ah, uh, yes! 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 Good composition. Reminiscent in my final scenes from the last film I shot with Paul Lucas. Oh, for God's sake! Norman Calling with uh, Oscar Homolka, Conrad Veidt, and George Brinch, but I bet you all have seen that. Even though it hasn't been released. <laughs> Ah, uh, because you all have seen every movie I've made that hasn't been released yet, but that's a little matter. Because you're all going to die. How should I make these flames spread quicker? Mm. Uh, try cognac. Eddie, you're just in the nick of time. Well, I was no sooner in tunnels when it hit me what Miss Von Brossen Tenniel said. Sorry, what did I say? It's amazing there. And what's another word for corn? Maze! Kendall Maze! Excuse me, if you're done with that bottle of cognac, can I borrow it? Bernice, you have had enough to drink. You don't have to count, Roger. We're not at your house. Oh. Kendall Maze, the stage door slasher? Sure. He killed those women and then went to the one place where his madness, his paranoia, his murderous, inhumane tendencies would never be noticed. And where's that? Metro Goldwyn Mayor. Oh. <laughs> well, I'd best have a look for that policeman. He could be wandering in the whole hostel for hours. You go in through there. I want you to stay here and do whatever innocents do. Do you have any rope? Oh, in the closet. Bernice. Uh, I guess the killer caught it is okay this time. Oh. oh, I'm so tired of picking this one up off the floor. <laughs> oh, this calls for strong coffee. Did she get the rope? What rope? It's right there. Oh, listen, uh. I really prefer being a comic to hero because when you're a hero, you spend most of your time being scared out of your wits. But I, I better go back in those walls and tell Kelly who caught the flash. And the saboteur. Yeah, but what about the sister selling sausage? Yeah, I'm gonna go back in the walls. I'd prefer uh, another knot in that if I were you. Where is everybody? Oh. Wait a minute. If Ken's the stage door slasher, then who killed? Ivy! <gasps> Big quiet! Don't scream! And you may not be hurt. Ah! I know what you are thinking. You are thinking. Oh, I am trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and I could probably take that knife away from another smaller woman. And that may be true. But can you take it from a man? Oh my god! Naval intelligence was even a little bit intelligent. They would know that Dita Renzo was once the toast of the Barnet Cabarets, even more famous than Sally Bowles. A female impersonator? The best. I do like Julia, Josephine Baker, and a gay tea chick. Also, my legs are better. Then you killed everybody. Miss Beaverstock? I thought it was Fräulein von Grosskunden. She'd been sitting in that chair. With her up the way, this entire house would have been mine. Also, I wanted people to think that the stage door slash was here. As it turned out, he was. I also got the Gestapo agent. Oh, really? No, O'Reilly. <laughs> this also something from the cabarets. So then O'Reilly actually was? As he told you, Klaus stands off. When Franz and I took off with the Fatherland's money, Franz in New York. He must have had some information about my sister, so he came here. Then it, it was your sister? Twin sister, Jack. Ja. You killed your own sister? We were never false, and I need to give her identification, as I now need yours. You'll never get away with this. Of course I'm going to get away with this. I have a quarter of a million dollars, and this is America! <laughs> so now, Miss Naval Intelligence, you are about to disappear into the walls of this ridiculous house forever. Hey, don't move. I, I'm a skilled marksman. on with 
Mr. Lone Ranger. I know. <laughs> a Luba. German dog. The best. But what's with her hair? She's a guy. Why is she wearing a dress? I understand. <laughs> We're trying to stay out of the army. Strange country, America. Where else can you find a super spy and a comedian in the same room? Uh, White House, probably. Ah, uh, you go halfway over there. What's he so burned up about anyway? Tell him to do the windows or something? This is teacher Vinzel. A, a homicidal maniac? Boy, we could be in some trouble. I'm going to kill you. Now, that won't be so easy. Why not? Because I'm scared of guns. So naturally, when they handed me that gun and told me to go into the tunnels, I removed the bullets. And you're just in the nick of time a second time! This on that really packs a bunch. <laughs> uh, you tie up her, and then... Him? Uh, and I'll keep an eye on him. Will anybody move? Uh, it's okay, Sarge, we caught the slasher. This is a stage four slasher. I'm the lyricist! Uh, this is the stage door slasher. Over here. Hello? Hello? Are you all right? Here is the stage door slasher. And Helsa's a Nazi saboteur. Helsa is a Nazi saboteur? But it's not Helsa, it's her brother Dieter Binzel, a female impersonator. I'm the best. I do lots of Menya, Josephine Baker. Really? Do you do Judy Garland? No, her voice is too ranged for me. It's true, we're all head tones. Can we leave the musical discussion for another day, please? I want to walk this to up. I warn you! I know John Warner and Jan John Jekyll and Parsley! I have lunch with a lot of Parsons! I know it's small government, a small act to say, but one day, no just for political greatness! One day, one day! Fine, fine, we're coming off this thing. Oh, you dear Captain. Oh, they will! In love again! Okay, pal, say that's the same thing. I will! I will! No! Yeah! Gee, we caught a slot train inside of tour. We'll probably make one jolt. We are restored to the world! Oh, this calls for a celebration. Let's repair to the dining room for crepes von Bay von Grossenknoten. <laughs> that's not made with. Corn now, is it? Corn? Corn! Corn, of course, corn! That is it, Roger! We were wrong studying our musical in Washington. These are desperate times. Times that call on the spirit of America. Our next show is going to take place in Washington, not Nebraska, Nebraska! N E B R A S K A Nebraska Corn. You two certainly performed heroically today. In Sydney, Navy will be very proud of you, and I intend to write Eleanor about you. As for you, Mr. McEwen, I'm sorry it wasn't a real audition, or I'm certain you would have gotten the part. That's okay. He got the girl. Uh, he did. I did. How can I resist a guy who comes flying out of the walls every time I need him? Well, I gotta warn you, I'm not a hero naturally. No one's a hero naturally. Anyhow, I'm not concerned about heroics. I'm concerned about chemistry. Now that I got covered. Yes, I know you inherited it. Ah! That is slow! Uh, Elsa? Nine! I am her cousin, Katerina! Say, go, go, Ha! 